الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثينا فيه أبدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها المسلمون أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته كما قال في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع سيئة الحسنة تتمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم tells us احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله Begin to do and to say everything that is beneficial to you and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you In other words, before you do anything, before you say anything try to think about the benefits that you will reap from the word that you will say that you will reap from the act that you will do so if you find out that there is no benefit from what you will say and from what you will do, it's better to abstain. Because according to a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, he says, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir falyakul khayran aw yasmud. Whoever believes in Allah and in the last day, the day of judgment, let him say the truth, let him say what's good, or if he doesn't find anything good, any, any good thing to say, or any beneficial word or statement to say, let, then let him keep quiet. So brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, with our bodies, with different bounties and different blessings. So we ought to use them positively. One of them is the tongue. The tongue is a double-edged sword. If you use it in the right way, you will reap a lot of rewards. A lot of rewards will accrue to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you use it in the negative way, then it will result in evil consequences for you. So brothers and sisters in Islam, it's very important to be keen to say what's important for you and to avoid gossip, to avoid futile statements from which you do not benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Balad, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ وَهَدَيْنَاهُ النَّجْدَيْنِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enumerating some of the blessings and bounties that he has given us. So he says, didn't we make for him two eyes, a tongue, and two lips, and guided him towards the two highways of right and wrong? This is a rhetorical question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirming to us that he blessed us with two eyes, with a tongue and two lips, so that we use them in the positive way. If we use them in the negative way, it, it, they will result in an evil consequence for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, after warning those who accuse chaste, obedient women of immorality without having any evidence, after warning them that they will be cursed here on earth and in the hereafter, and they will be cast into a very severe punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ On a day when their tongues, their hands and their legs will testify against them about the evil they were doing on earth. So brothers and sisters in Islam, according to Sheikh Sha'awi, he says our body parts that we use sometimes to disobey Allah, they don't like it. You're forcing them to disobey Allah, yet they are inclining towards obeying Allah. So when you force them to do wrong, when you force them to commit sins, they are angry with you. And thus, on the day of judgment, they will testify against you, that you were forcing, it, you were, you were forcing them to do wrong, yet they didn't like it. And actually the context of this 
was about accusing women who are chased falsely using the tongues and actually sometimes there are some ulterior motives in doing that. For example, someone wants to marry a second wife, he will come up with flimsy excuses in order to justify the second marriage, to tarnish the reputation of his first wife. So Allah is warning you of that, that if you do that, there is punishment awaiting you if you die without sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, it's very important to guard your tongue. It's very important to make sure whatever you say is beneficial to you and to the community and it will rip you a lot of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the bona fide companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name Uqba ibn Amir. He went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, man najat, O Messenger of Allah, what are the factors of prosperity on this earth and salvation on the day of judgment? What shall I do to prosper, to achieve my goals on this earth, to be away from the curse of Allah and this which, which and whatever you will advise me to do when I do it will be one of the reasons why I enter paradise by the, by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him three things. He said the first one, Amsik alayka lisanak, control your tongue. If you want to be prosperous here on earth, if you want to be delivered from the, from the hell fire, control your tongue. Don't say anything without verifying the truth about it. Don't accuse someone falsely. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't use your tongue in a negative way because if you do, then you will be away from deliverance on the day of judgment. Then number two, he said, There are many interpretations about this, uh, this second factor. The first one is, be satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Be satisfied with what you have in your house. When you visit someone's house, don't admire his property. Don't wish that you had that property in your house. Don't wish him bad. Don't be jealous. Don't envy. But be satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and work very hard in order to make your life better without, without plotting against anyone, without ill will against anyone. So be satisfied with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you because the sustenance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whatever subhanahu wa whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined for you you will not die before you get it so the prophet says well yes another interpretation is after you've performed all the compulsory acts of worship especially prayer in the masjid in jama'ah make sure that you perform some optional acts of worship in your house don't make your house like a grave. So the Prophet ﷺ says, instead of going out to gossip, going out to spy on people, to lie to people, stay in your house, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making your house a house of worship, for which you will get a lot of rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will get a lot of blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third interpretation is, whenever there is unrest outside, there is mutiny, don't be part of it. Stay in your house to avoid trouble, to avoid difficulties. Don't be tempted by people who are, who are striking for unjust causes and then you will get problem afterwards. So if there is unrest, if there are riots, stay in your house calm and tranquil, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with solutions to your problems. And the third one, if you happen to commit to commit a sin when you are unaware, so repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while crying. There are four major conditions that you have to fulfill if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to, to accept your repentance. First of all is to, act, to admit that you committed a sin. Number two is to regret as to why you committed that sin. Number three, to pledge that you will never commit it again. Number four, if you did wrong to someone, 
you apologize to that person. And number five, the ad is to be sincere in your repentance. So you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and you don't be part of any unrest, of any trouble because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to invest your time in coming closer to Him. Whatever you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be rewarded here on earth and in the hereafter. So uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the Uqba bin Amr three things. If you want salvation, if you want prosperity on earth, if you want to del if you want deliverance from the hellfire on the day of judgment, then you have to adhere to three things. The first one is to control your time. The second one, to be satisfied with what you have in your house. Number three is to cry in repentance if you happen to commit a sin. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet وسلم, is clear in this. Abu Hurairah anhu, says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن العبد لا يتكلم بالكلمة ما يتبين فيها يهوي بها في النار ما بين المشرق والمغرب رواه البخاري A hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said A servant of Allah may utter a word may, may say a statement without giving it a thought without thinking about the repercussions of this statement because of that negative statement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cast him into the hellfire, a distance between the east and the west. So the Prophet ﷺ is warning us against saying negative statements without giving them a thought. This is why Al Imam al Nawawi says, So if, for example, there is a trouble, there is a problem, and people start gossiping about it, and you think that talking and not talking are the same, whether you will talk about it, whether you won't talk about it, no benefits will be, will be achieved, then Al Imam al Nawawi says, it's better for you to abstain in, in, from involving into statements about a problem which you think won't make a difference. So it's better to keep quiet if you know that what you will say will not make a difference, will not make a change, or will not change the status quo. So if you are, if you adhere to this attitude, you will be safe, and your time will be safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, it was narrated by Sahal bin Sa'd that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day was advising his companions and he told them, he said, Man yagman li ma bayna lahyayhi wa ma bayna rijlayhi agmanu lahu al-jannah. Rawahu al-Bukhari wa Muslim. The Prophet wasallam told his companions that whoever will guarantee to me that he will protect his tongue and his private purse, not using them in a negative way, not using them in the disobedience of Allah, I will guarantee paradise for him. So the Prophet tells you that if you safeguard your tongue, you don't say negative words, you don't chastise people, you don't accuse people falsely, and you don't use your private parts except in what's halal, then the Prophet وسلم, guarantees paradise for you. It isn't difficult, brothers and sisters, to guard your tongue, to control what you say. It isn't difficult to think about what you say before you say it, and you measure the effects of what you will say before you say it. It's not difficult to guard your private perp. If you do that, the Prophet وسلم, guarantees you paradise. And if the Prophet وسلم, the most beloved human being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees you paradise, this means you will be there. So brothers and sisters in Islam, don't, don't engross yourself into idle talk from which you can't benefit anything. At work, when you hear some people gossip, avoid it. And if you can, in positive ways, try to discourage them from, you, from wasting their time gossiping about others backbiting others, accusing others falsely, saying that this so and so says such and such, yet they didn't say it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra tells us, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ إِنَّ الْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادِ إِنَّ الْبَصَرَ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So you find people talking about something 
out of intrusiveness, out of nosiness, you intrude into their talk, you want to listen to what they say, you give comments, yet you don't know the context of the story. So you start giving up comments which are irrelevant. So Allah is warning you, is telling, don't, is telling you, don't say, I heard so and so say such and such, I saw so and so do such and such, don't do that. Don't be a witness of things which you didn't see. Don't be a witness of things which you didn't hear because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you for the bounties and faculties that he gave you. He gave you the faculty of seeing, the faculty of hearing, the, um, the, the, the conceptions of the heart. He will question you about these blessings on the day of judgment. Did you use them in the right way? Did you use them in the, in the wrong way? Some people, for example, have a tendency of lying in order to make their friends laugh. So he knows what he says is wrong, but because he enjoys making people laugh, he makes himself a clown, he will lie to the people because he wants them to laugh. The Prophet ﷺ warns you, don't do that. So even when you are joking, you have to tell the truth. Don't lie to someone and claim you are joking. The Prophet ﷺ used to joke, but he never told lies. Just one example of how the Prophet ﷺ would make jokes and wouldn't tell lies. There was an old woman who went to the Prophet ﷺ asking him of what she will do to go to paradise. The Prophet ﷺ joking with her, told her that all the women won't go to paradise. She cried and then he told his companions to inform her that when she goes to paradise, she will not be old, she will be young. And he quoted some verses, Uruban Atraba, they will be young of the same age, those women who will go to paradise. So he was joking with her, at the same time he was telling the truth. So those of you who have the tendency of lying to their friends, lying to their spouses, claiming that they are joking, avoid it. Even when you're joking, make sure you tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth while you're joking or in any other circumstance, you will be responsible for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you die without repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for that. So brothers and sisters of Islam, we have to be careful and we don't have to be judgmental, judging people because so and so didn't do an act of worship. You judge him, he's a kafir, he's a non-believer, he will go to hell. Who has given you this authority? The Prophet sallallahu in a hadith that was narrated by Jund of Ibn Abdullah, he told his companions, he says there were two people, one of them was righteous and another one was not righteous. The one who was righteous was angry at some point and told the other that Lan li fulan. Allah will not forgive so and so. So this man is giving himself authority to judge his, his colleague or his acquaintance or his fellow human being that Allah will not forgive him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was angry. He said, "Man the ladi yata Allah alayya anla aghfira li fulan, fa inni qad ghafar tu lahu wa ahbab tu amalak." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told man, the man who judged his fellow human being, saying that Allah won't forgive him. Allah says, "Who is he? Who is he that swears by my name that I won't forgive so and so?" Now I have forgiven him and rendered all your good deeds futile, fruitless. So the man who was, who was a pious person, and because of his piety, he thought he had moral authority, religious obligation to judge others, Allah was angry with him. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. So do not use your tongue to judge people, to lie about people, to tarnish people's reputation. You use it rather in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, in a hadith was that was narrated by Abdullah ibn, ibn, ibn Bus, he says, جَاءَ رَجُلٌ إِلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ شَرَائِعَ الْإِسْلَامِ قَدْ كَثُرَتْ عَلَيَّ فَأْمُرْنِي بِشَيْءٍ أَتَشَبَّثُ بِهِ فَقَالَ رَسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ لَا يَزَالُ لِسَالُ فَرَطِبًا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ So a man approached the Prophet he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, indeed the optional acts of worship in Islam have become too much. There are a lot of optional acts of worship in Islam. I cannot perform all of them. I'm a weak person. I don't have enough time. So please, I ask you to inform me of an act of worship by which if I adhere to 
I will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man says there are a lot of sunnah, acts of worship, and we as human beings, we can't do everything. So the man was asking the Prophet sallallahu to advise him on simple acts of worship which are optional that will bring him the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the Prophet sallallahu told him, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله Do not cease do not cease making your tongue moist by mentioning and remembering the name of Allah. So instead of gossiping, instead of lying, instead of backbiting among others, use your tongue to remember Allah. Use your tongue to make al adkar And alhamdulillah, there are a lot of booklets, a lot of pamphlets full of adkar. If you don't memorize them, keep them in your pocket. When you're free, remember the name of Allah. Of Allah. For example, I gave a khutbah about saying four statements which are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. If you say them 100 times, there are a lot of benefits. If you go to YouTube and search for that khutbah, you will find a lot of benefits for saying these statements. So why do you waste your time gossiping, lying, backbiting among others? Yet, there are some simple statements which you can say and will bring you the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything you are given is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah gives it to you in order to worship Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave you the blessing of the tongue, which you use in so many ways that benefit you, does not allow you at the same time after mentioning your name then to say bad words, swear words, castigate people. This isn't right, brothers and sisters in Islam. So a tongue is very important and actually some scholars, majority of the scholars have said nine-tenths of the sins that are committed, they are committed by the tongue or they are committed using the tongue. So someone wants to lie, he will use the tongue. Someone wants to testify falsely, especially if he has been ended with, uh, with, uh, with, with, um, uh, with good speech, with a convincing way of speech, he will use the tongue to convince people that he saw something yet he didn't see. He didn't see that, uh, that what he claims he saw. So if you do it this way, you convince people with your tongue in the wrong way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you for that. So brothers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us to remember Him, using the tongue to mention Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, for example, in Surah al -Ra He says, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُضِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنَابُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu qulu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you know the, the policies of Makkah, they claim that if only a miraculous sign was sent to the Prophet from his Lord, we would believe him. So the policies of Makkah were claiming that if there was a sign that Allah sent to the Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to prove that he was a messenger of Allah, they would believe him. Yet they were lying because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to them a lot of signs, a lot of miracles. And in some cases, the more they saw the miracles, the more they distanced themselves from Islam. So Allah is instructing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's telling him, tell them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives to stray whomsoever he lives, he, 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 he likes. But he guides towards him those who are penitent. Whenever they commit sins, they would repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are those who are penitent? Al-lazina amanu. These are those who believed. وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And their hearts find tranquility, find calm by remembering Allah, by mentioning Allah. So the ayah ends, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Be aware that by remembering Allah, mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your hearts will find tranquility. So this is a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a tongue in order to remember him, in order to mention him, in order to say good words. For example, if you say in a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, So a person might say a word without giving it attention, without thinking about the result of what he said. 
But because it pleases Allah, what you said pleases Allah, Allah will raise you high in paradise. You will have high degrees in paradise. And actually not only in paradise, even here on earth. It depends on what you say and how you say it. Two people might approach a person wanting to convince him to do something or to abstain from something depending on their choice of words and depending on, depending on how they speak and the manner of the speech one could convince the person and the other one wouldn't so by choosing good words you will actually achieve your goals here on earth by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your intention for the choice of good words and for using the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in means that bring that bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bil ayat al-Dhikr al-Hakim aqulu qawdi hadha wa astaghfirullah al-Azim wa li wa lakum. Alhamdulillah ila di hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadi ala ula al-hadha Allah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika la Brothers and sisters in Islam, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the bona fide companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, أَنذَرْتُكُمْ فُضُولَ الْكَلَامِ بِحَسْبِ أَحَدِكُمْ مَا بَلَغَ حَاجَةً So I warn you of gossip. I warn you of saying futile words, futile statements. I warn you of being nosy. You find people ta talking, you intrude into them, you, you give statements, you don't know where the story began, and you give sometimes false statements which are not related to the topic. So Abdullah bin Masood says, he warns you. And if you can talk, then be concise. Use words that are few, but will deliver the message to the person you're talking to. Because if you have the tendency of talking a lot because you want to impress people, you might lie. And this will bring you sins from Allah, so it will bring you sins. So brothers and sisters in, in Islam, make sure you use the tongue in a positive way. There is a lecture that I attended. It was given by a nutritionist, uh, encouraging people to eat nutritious food, telling them how it's good for their body. And according to him, to that nutritionist, he said 99% of the choices of the food that we take, it's based on the tongue. Because the food tastes good, you want to eat it. You don't ask whether it's beneficial for your health or for your well-being because the taste is good. You eat it and you continuously eat it because of the taste. After some time, the doctor tells you, now you have diabetes because you used to eat this and that because of the taste. So according to him, 99% of the food choices that we take based on the time. Just one part of your body contributes to 99% of the choices of your, your food intake. In other words, if you do not control your tongue, not only in speech, in what you eat, it will bring you problems here on earth and in the hereafter. This is why I began with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Be keen to say things, to do things that are beneficial to you, even food. Before eating it, ask how will it benefit your health. If it doesn't benefit your health, avoid it. It will be detrimental to your health. This body isn't your property. It's the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you take care of your body, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards you. And the more you harm your body, especially if it's intentional, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry with you. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the brothers and sisters in, brothers and sisters in Islam, that let's be careful in how we use our tongues and other blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should use them in ways that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallu wa sallimu ala man umirtum bis salati wa salami alayh. Wa muman bi qawlihi ta'ala inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad.